Hello guys and welcome back to my 3D platformer tutorial series for Unreal Engine 5. In case you guys don't remember, this is the series where we are going to be creating a game that's basically a clone between Crash and Mario. We have reached the third part and in this part we are going to be taking a look at how to create checkpoints, kind of similar to Crash Bandicoot, but you don't have to break them. If you just pass next to them, it will be counted as a checkpoint and then we will respawn next to the checkpoint or if there are no checkpoints we are going to be respawning back at the player start actor if you guys want full access to the entire series plus the project files do not hesitate to check out my patreon but if you don't want that just don't mind it you can just give this video a like and that would really support the series that i do also one last thing i want you guys to check out the first link in the description which is a link that leads to my game steam page you can either wishlist the game or if you are watching this in the future you should buy the game if you think it's something that you might enjoy in the workplace of madness is a survival horror game that's inspired by Resident Evil 1, 2 and 3, both the original and the remakes and it's also inspired by a little game series called Clock Tower. So guys if you like survival horror games do not hesitate to check out the game and wishlist slash buy if it's something that you might enjoy and without further ado let us get started with the tutorial. So we want to get started by going to the blueprints folder and creating a blueprint class. You want to search for something called a game instance. The game instance allows us to carry data between levels. So whenever you open a new level, you can put on variables in there and these variables will actually still be there and they will not reset between the level. And that way you can just go back and take them to the character. If you don't understand it, do not worry. We will go through it step by step. So call this actor bp underscore game instance and over here inside of our game instance we want to create a brand new variable and we are going to call this variable respawn transform and this is going to be the transform where the character is going to respawn after you take the checkpoint. So yeah just change the variable type to transform and then create another new variable and we are going to be calling this variable checkpoint on and this checkpoint on variable will determine if we will respawn at the respawn transform or not. So you can just go and do the category, call it checkpoint. This will come in handy when you are organizing the project and you want, you know, each variables to be in a certain category. Anyway, compile and exit and then go to project settings. Go to, actually you can just search for it or you can go to maps and modes and the game instance class should be there. You want to change it to the brand new game instance, which is called BP underscore game instance. And this is where it's going to be, you know, it's going to set it as the default game instance for the project. Now you want to create a new blueprint class and choose actor. This is going to be the checkpoint actor. So call it BP checkpoint. And we are going to go to open game art and then look for any static mesh that you want to use for the checkpoint. For Crash, they use a box, but when you hit it, it actually opens and it becomes, you know, just cardboard. I'm just going to get a gift box and we are not going to be doing anything with it. You just want to pass next to it. It was a blend file, so I opened it in Blender and exported. Whatever you download, it might actually be something different. Like you might get just an FBX file and you can just import it into Unreal Engine. I've showed you how to import in prior parts. You just need to drag your mod model in there and just hit import. You don't necessarily have to change anything. So as you can see, this is my gift box. We are going to be adding it as a static mesh in the BP checkpoint actor. So hit add and type static mesh. And with those two selected in the content browser, it automatically adds both of them as static meshes. I changed the size because mine was way too big. So you can just adjust it based on your static mesh. Then we are going to be searching for a sphere collision. Now there are many ways to detect the player character's collision, but for this we are going to be using collision actors since it's very basic and easy to use. With the sphere collision selected, go to the event graph and right click, search for on component begin overlap, and then from the other actor, get instigator. And then 
cast to the third person character. When the third person character touches this box actor or the sphere collision to be more exact, we will play a sound which is going to be just a random sound from the engine. We are not going to be importing our own yet. So get this note called play sound 2D and choose a random sound. You don't need to import anything yet. So next you want to cast to BP game instance because you want to set the respawn transform in the game instance when you touch the checkpoint. So from the cast node for the object you want to get game instance. So as BP game instance what we are going to do is we are going to set the respawn transform and now we need a value to put in there. So how are we going to do that? Well, you can just get the actor location for starters, but you don't want to like respawn in the middle of it because there would be a problem with the, um, like you would just be on top of that box. Anyway, you can see over here that I renamed the sphere to sphere collision because I wanted to avoid confusion. Next, you want to add a scene component. So just search for scene. This will be where we will put our respawn location in and it, it will also be a rotation so you can just rotate it based on where you want your character to look when respawning. I recommend attaching it to the default scene route. Anyway, just move it away from the box and then put it in the event graph. You can just drag it, then get world transform and then connect it to the set respawn transform and this should set the respawn location scene component to be the did you guys just hear my cat? Anyway, from BP Game Instance, the cast, you want to set checkpoint on because this is like, if checkpoint is on, we are going to be respawning at the respawn transform. So drag it out and set checkpoint on to be true. What we want to do if it's not on is we are going to respawn at the player start, the default one. So make sure it is checked. And I want you guys to double check everything, the names, the actors, all the values, make sure that everything matches mine. Also the sphere collision, you can make it a little bit bigger via the radius. And once you are done with all of that, just compile and save. And I think we are going to be doing something else first. And you can just organize it the same way I do. You can select everything and press the Q button and that should straighten all of the nodes, which is like something useful. And I only learned it after like, I don't know how many years of using Unreal Engine has it been like 10? No, almost 10. So once we are done with everything, you want to drag out of the last node and then this will be telling us that our checkpoint is working. So type checkpoint in the in string and put some exclamation marks because you know, it's a celebration that you've reached a checkpoint. Anyway, compile and save. And next we are going to be going to the third person character or the player character. And over here, we want to do a little something at the event begin play. So any place in the event graph, if you do not have a begin play, right click event begin play, cast to game instance. And over here, the object once again is going to be get game instance, which is the default game instance of the project out of as BP game instance, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be getting the respawn transform and the checkpoint on so get the checkpoint on and then and then you want to do a branch and then this branch you want to connect it to the checkpoint on so next if it's true we are going to be getting the respawn transform so if it's true we are going to be setting the players transform as soon as the begin play happens so when the level opens which is exactly what we need because we are going to be opening reopening the level once we die so set actor transform and then from the sbp game instance you want to get respawn transform and connect it as the new transform in the set actor transform and this will ensure that this is the same checkpoint transform that you have and every time you reach a new checkpoint, it will actually override it. So it's exactly what we need. So we are going to be leaving a comment on this, which is spawn at checkpoint. This will make sure that we do not forget what this is. If you don't know how to do a comment, just um, select all of the nodes that you want to comment on and then press the C button. So at this part, I actually messed up, but actually follow me and you will see what the problem is. 
I disconnected it from the begin play and added it to the part where we check for death at the custom event for check for death and connected it after the quit game and of course this wouldn't work so you need to delete the quit game and connect it to the last delay. Now there are a few nodes that we want to copy because we need to re-enable the input and reset the visibility for the player character so that when they respawn they actually can be seen and can actually play the game. So just copy and paste those and then from the get player controller type enable input and then what you want to do is connect it to the set visibility and you want to make sure that the visibility is set to true so now if you put the box in a certain area in the level in the details panel go to respawn location and you can actually set it to be whatever you want however there will be a problem once you give it a try go to that checkpoint and then go die you will see the fact that when you respawn you will actually get like you will get shrunken to the size which is like very small and not the default size so we are going to be fixing that by going to the value for the respawn transform and for the scale we are actually not going to be getting it also the enable input you want to change the target to be self and the player controller to be the get player controller anyway go to the set actor transform and in the new transform area you want to break the transform from the reroute node and split struck pin on the new transform after you disconnect it and you want to connect the location and the rotation but you want to leave the scale we don't want this the scale at all to be moved or to be changed so that is going to be perfect next we are going to go to the bp checkpoint because we want to add an arrow component to the respawn location we want to be able to tell which way it's facing because we want to set it to be the same thing as the respawn location so we are going to be selecting each of those just to make sure that they match the locations what you can do is you can actually reset both to zero and then change them based on what you need so then go back and change the respawn location and make the arrow face the checkpoint if you want the character to be facing the checkpoint and you can see over here that now we have this arrow that tells us which way we will be facing and you can change it to be whatever you want which is exactly what we need so now you want to hit play go to the um, checkpoint trigger it and then wait for the character to die or you know i do have that death button that's what i was activating it with you can actually jump at the spikes and that will also work but you can see the fact that we actually respawn at the checkpoint which is exactly what we need now there is still one more thing we want to do we are currently respawning without actually reopening the level so the enemies will not respawn the coins will not respawn everything will stay the same which is not what we need so we want to move the respawn stuff and the checkpoint stuff back to the event begin play so disconnect it and from the delay we want to open level by object reference so we are going to be right clicking on this node and we are going to be converting it into a function called open level now all of this stuff you want to move it over there to the begin play and at the begin play you just connect it the same as before and there shouldn't be any problems with it it will happen as soon as the level starts use this node called get current level name and this will automatically get the name of the level that you are in which is exactly what we need so inside of the um, function open level by name instead of by object reference and connect it like this and then if you go back here you from the get current level name connect it to the level name and um, just connect it after the delay and this will respawn us at the start or it will respawn us and reopen whichever level that we are in at the moment and with that checkpoint stuff at the begin play it will be perfect hit play and give it a try and if you die you will restart at the player start but if you go to the checkpoint and then you die 
you will see that you will respawn at the checkpoint with the perfect transform that you have determined yourself which is exactly what we needed and you will see that the coins have also respawned so opening the level again was perfect so guys i really hope you enjoyed the video if you have please leave a like and comment and subscribe if you are new to the channel and uh, please look forward to more tutorials uh, check out patreon for more project files and tutorials upcoming also do not forget to wishlist my game because that would really be awesome so guys thank you for watching please take care have a great day and bye